Hey guys, welcome to the first tutorial in a series I'm going to do for um, Flappy Bird in processing. If you don't know what processing is, it's actually unsupported now, but you can still download it and use it. It's a great way to learn coding. Uh, it's a little bit advanced, so it's not too bad. Um, it's it's really a great way to, to learn coding, especially if you have aspirations into building games or something like that online. So anyways, we're going to use the P images first. This is the first thing you got to learn because you want to use a background that's actually an image. So it's a little bit different than what we've done on the other tutorials, but Basically, the way you use an image is you declare the class type p image, so you have to memorize that, and then the name of the um, the image will be whatever you want. Okay, and then once you get to the setup, you declare how big you want your screen to be. You can then load in the image. It won't actually appear until you put it into the draw function. Remember, this is the main function. That, so all of these, by the way, are just always. So you can make your own methods, but these functions set up and draw you should have in every program. So the way you call it is you do image and then you tell it what image and then you do the X and Y location. So let's go ahead and look at the editor and try that. So first of all when you go to do P image you'll know you did it right if it turns orange. You see how it's not orange? It's because I forgot to capitalize this. So if it turns orange you know you did it right or at least you did something that it knew. Sometimes you'll type something on accident and it turns a color and you oh I can't use that name. So I'll just call it BG for background. So I'll declare it. And then in my setup, oops, void setup, I'm going to do size 600 by 600. That's like, I like that size, so I'm just going to use that. And then I'll do bg load image, and then I'll have to find it. So uh, I'm going to put a URL of a dot slash image slash um, we'll do. We'll call it bg.png. So this is a little awkward because it doesn't actually know where that is. So if I tried to do that, it won't be able to find it. So, but I'm just writing the code like it it set up. So again, I'm just following along the the list here. I'm not using the exact same numbers or names, but I'm using the same concept. And we'll just pack it in at zero zero. Okay. So now if I do that and run it. Of course, it's not going to work because it can't find that image. So first thing is, let's get an image. So when I look on video game background images, there's a lot of different choices you can come up with. It doesn't really matter which ones you use. However, and this is a good one, by the way, because it goes on forever, super long. However, you want to make sure that when you use an image, it's going to be symmetric on each side. And, and, and that's for this game only. And what I mean by that is you kind of want it to be the same on each side. So I found this image right here because it kind of illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so by the way, this is GIMP if you're not used to um, an image manipulation tool. Um, GIMP is free, and you can just basically load your images here, and you can rescale them. So I found this one on the Internet, and basically what's nice about it is it's the same on each side. Everything that's on the left, so this is where the edge is. And here's the other edge. And when you compare the edges, they are exactly the same. Like if I took just a slice of this and put it right here, it would be seamless. You wouldn't be able to tell that that was part of the other side. And why that's important is because I'm actually going to put another image side by side. And I'm going to move the images together so that you, will, you won't see the end. And that will make more sense once we start coding. <clears throat> now this image I, I kind of stole from the internet. but And you'll see that I got it. And it has only a height of 350 pixels. Or no, this one's actually already been rescaled. So, so I actually rescaled it. But I was going to say, uh, so I already did. Sorry about that. But you can rescale. So I could make it bigger by scaling it to 800. Or uh, actually, you know what? I'll do that. I'll make it 800 just to make it a little bigger. So we'll go ahead and make it 800. And then what I'm going to do is I'll do export as. And I'll just call it BG because that's what I named it in the video. So go ahead and name it BG. And this is going to my desktop. I probably could have exported it directly to the, um, I could have done it directly. So it's not responding because it's still looking for that thing. So sometimes you have to force it to close. Anyways, let's go ahead and get that image. So BG, and we're going to go ahead and move that into the image folder. So now if I look in the image folder, it's there. And it is a PNG file, so that means it's all set up correctly. So now if I go back to this program, and I try to look inside of the dot slash image folder slash p bg dot this is the name of the file. It should hopefully find it. There it is. Okay, now it's it's out it's out of uh it's not scaled right because remember I changed it. So let's make our window bigger. 
Okay, there it is, 800 by 800. So we have successfully loaded the background image. And now we're going to make it move. So how do we do that? So you see this right here? This is where the images are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables. I'll make them integers. You can make them floats. It doesn't matter. I'll call them BGX and BGY. I actually don't need a BGY. I just think about it. But I'm going to replace these variables with BGX and BGY. So instead of using numbers, they're going to look for the values of these variables. Now, it won't change right now because if you don't give it an initial value in your setup, it'll just be 0, 0. But what I can do now is I can do BGX equals BGX minus 1. I can subtract 1 from itself. And what that does is now it starts to move. So that's the animation. Now, watch what happens for a second. I'll let it run through. When it gets to the end of this, you're going to notice that it runs out of room. And once the image is over, then it's just going to leave a trail. So this is the edge of the image. So the edge of the image is moving across the screen, but what's left behind is whatever's there. So that's kind of how processing works. It doesn't have anything to draw, so it just leaves what was already written. So we're not drawing over it anymore. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually copy this line of code but you're going to so you're going to pack in the same image but you're going to move this one over just a little farther how much farther exactly the width of the image so you do this right here is the width of the object bg which is a photo so i don't actually care how wide it is i'm just going to use the bgy that might not make a lot of sense to you guys but this is part of processing why it's so great so now when it gets to the end of this image there'll be another image behind it and so that'll run through and it will just keep going. Of course, eventually that image will disappear also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little if statement in here. BGX is less than uh, negative BG width. So when it gets to the part where it's completely, it's all the way down to negative however wide it is, then I'm going to reset the value of BGX to zero. Okay, so you see even now this ran a lot longer, eventually it got to the end. I don't want it to ever end, so that's what this coda does. It basically resets it once first image is done. So once the first image gets to the end, then it'll basically reset. Let me actually speed this up because you guys are watching this on the video. So I'll make it go a lot faster. So now if I go and watch this, it'll just keep going. So now this is going all forever, and that's what I want. So now I can have my game. I haven't built a game. I just have a background. But I can build a game of a flappy bird, and it'll be flapping around here, and it, and it looks like it's moving because the background is moving. Okay, now I actually do want to do one thing because this is for my computer science kids, and if you're watching this and you're in, in your coding, you should also be doing the same thing. I'm going to take all this code right here, and I'm going to put it into its own method, and I'll just say set background set bg. So I'm going to write a method called set bg and I'll paste that code just the way it is. So I didn't actually change anything, but that's what that code did, right? All that code that I wrote set the background or I could call this whatever I want, but this is basically called abstraction. This right here is basically going to take all that code and move it out of my main function. Remember this right here is my main game loop. So everything that I put in here is going to take up real estate. I don't want to have it be confusing. If I have all these lines of code, I'm going to have a hard time finding this code. So now I have basically set it aside outside of that as a method, which I could go, if this wasn't working properly, like I don't want it to go that fast, I can still go to that method and edit it. It just makes it a lot easier. So that's the right way to make your code. So anyways, from the beginning, as you write the next method, whatever it does, name a method, and then put it in like that. That's a better way to code. All right, guys, I hope you liked the first one. And the next game, we'll talk about putting in a Flappy Bird. See you later next time.